the morning of Tuesday, April the 22nd, Falmouth awaits the arrival of Robin Knox Johnson aboard his 32-foot catch Suhaley, now only a few miles away from the finish, where he'll become the first man who has sailed around the world on his own, non-stop, a journey which has lasted 312 days. Knox Johnson, the man who's completed this voyage with his great spots of humour which have been brought back to us in the report. That I've got a bottle of wine for Christmas in the Southern Ocean. I've got a bottle of whiskey for the New Year. And my boat will not be under command on January the 1st. Shortly after that, the long delay, 137 days, when the world lost sight of Robin Knox Johnson. He was finally spotted Sunday the 5th of April. 500 miles west of the Azores, the sighting was made by the British tanker Mobile Acme, the first sighting for 137 days, after 30 ships of the NATO fleet had joined in the Atlantic search for this little 32-foot catch. All the eyes now turn on this boat. It's really a small boat, it's only 32 feet. Give you some comparison, lively ladies. Alec Rose at 36 feet, and of course, Sir Francis Chichester's boat, Gypsy Moth, fourth. 55 feet. In fact, Sir Francis Chichester is the chairman of the judges in this Sunday Times Golden Globe race, and he is with us at the moment on board the BBC launch, Rebecca. Sir Francis, good morning. Can you hear me? Oh, good morning. Good morning, Sir Francis. Nice to speak to you there. What are conditions like with you at the moment on board, Rebecca? Well, we've got rather a squall here at the moment, a rain squall, and uh, Suhaley is going very well indeed, surprising how well she's sailing. He's cut, he's brought, he's taken down his mainsail, and he's sailing on the mizzen and the uh, jib only. Going well. Is this, what you, is this what you'd expect him to be doing at this time? That's the view of the conditions. We don't want to lose the chairman he's of the judge. He's more test. comfortable than we are here. <laughs> Do you think this rather slow run in, and uh, he's not exactly racing into the finish, do you think this is a little frustrating for him? Must be, yes. Yeah. We've already seen that the Suheli in quite good shape, despite the battering it's received on this 30,000 mile journey did report that his cabin had shifted, was leaking, cracking up. He had trouble with his radio transmitter and he lost contact completely for some time. And even for Knox Johnson, it got to the stage where he said he was beginning to wonder how much of the original boat would be left when he reached home. Well, there's the answer. That's what's left and that's what's bringing Knox Johnson here in the farm. It's now about three and a half miles away from us, but making very slow progress indeed. A lot of work for this 30-year-old sailor to do. There he is. Look at the smile. Look at the smile on the face of the man who's coming in to take that prize. He really is enjoying this. This is tremendous. This really is. He's on a Sunday afternoon trip around the harbour. Yes, I hear you very well. That's fine. What's the situation down there now? Well, uh, I suppose you saw that uh, Robin Knox Johnson he, he couldn't quite get across the line on the right side of the buoy. So he did one of his uh, famous dives and it's off on the other tack. And he looks as if he's uh, going to explore this, this western shore. But I think he'll be diving round again any moment now and, coming, and heading up for the, the final line. It's a, it's a very tense moment for him. You can see that he's a bit strung up. Yes, yes. It's a bit agitating to have these... Have these both so close to him and around him what he wants to manoeuvre. We were in fact trying to hazard a guess as to how many more manoeuvres he would need to do before he did cross the line. Well, he, he could have done it last time when he, he, if he'd uh, kept his eye on the, on, the, on the boy, you know, and he was, um, and of course a lot of people were speaking to him, the Harbour Master's launch and that sort of thing, distracted him a little, I think. But I think if he gets around now, he should do it all right. And I was interested to get a, a sight of the, the other side of the, of the uh, of his yacht just now. Uh, and 
clear, there's very clear of particles. All the four part of the yard is very clear indeed, very clean house. I think we were getting almost too clear so, earlier there. The trouble is that the launch on the other side of us which balked us, you see. And now we're balking him. It's difficult for him and so on. Anyway, we're getting a better view now than ever of his house. Yeah, it's remarkably clean. It's got some splendid particles down near the stern. And I hope we're going to get a good walk. I think you may well be in danger of getting a greeting from it, Sir Francis. Yeah, I'm going to get a you now. I think, Sir Francis, will we'll leave you to get out of his way, Sir Francis. Got him disqualified, wouldn't it? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, of course, yes. You were saying about the stern. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes
the strength of that celebration, one's beginning to wonder if our friends from the Customs and Excise and the Water Guard haven't told him he can't take any of his duty-free goods aboard, he's going to drink it all. And this almost the Suheili lap of honour, as Knox Johnson 